Hi again, it's Chrissy Hughes, your life skills and deployment educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. Um, I also feel like your resident crazy lady who talks to iPads in her home. Um, I do miss the interaction we have in the classroom, I have to say. Um, but I'm happy to bring these uh, courses to you in an on-demand type setting. Um, please know to reach out to us for any other additional questions or concerns that you might have. Um, so today this brief is going to be the first part of a domestic violence prevention and reporting brief. I want to make sure that we divide those two because I think the reporting piece is very important. We want to make sure your command remains accountable and um, that you get people the help that they need. But also let's try and prevent that. I like to actually spend a lot of time on the prevention piece as well. So I'd actually um, like to bring to your attention that Again, these videos are meant to be used during the global pandemic with the COVID-19 crisis. Um, there, this is a condensed brief. It won't be everything we cover in a traditional brief. And then the other thing I want to bring to your attention is that when people are confined to their homes and they're isolated from their social support, that um, domestic violence likely will be increasing, as well as child abuse. And we want to make sure that we know that and we're aware of it because we want to we want to make sure we reach out to those who don't have any help. Okay, so this is our brief. We start talking. We're talking about functional families preventing spouse and intimate partner abuse. Um, this brief is uh, most of the time delivered by our family advocacy program uh, personnel. I do not work in family advocacy, so I want to just throw that out there as well. I'm a life skills educator. Um, so if you see any videos later from Family Advocacy, I would encourage you to go over there and view those as well because they are the experts in this program. So I'd like to start off with a little bit of myth and fact so we can kind of like gauge um, the knowledge that's in the room. So you can shout these out, say them to yourself, whisper them to your neighbor. So the first one is intimate partner violence is rare, myth or fact. As you probably can tell by, by my disclosure earlier, um, this is a myth. Intimate partner violence is in its upswing. Um, it increases yearly. And um, like we said, it's probably increasing during this pandemic. Yes, this is not a COVID-19 graph. Is everyone tired of seeing these by now? I certainly am. All right, drug, alco drug alcohol abuse and stress are the real causes of intimate violence. This is also a myth. That's not the real cause. The cause is uh, complicated, but regular alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and then frequent and persistent chronic stress really can uh, make domestic violence worse. Good to know. Domestic abuse is a personal problem between a husband and a wife. This is also a myth. This is not only between a husband and a wife. Yes, you can have domestic um, violence in a marriage. Um, no, it is not only something that needs to be kept between them. And then the other myth here is that um, domestic violence occurs between married heterosexual couples. Um, there are also intimate partner violence in same-sex couples, whether they are married or not. And the same with heterosexual couples. If they're married or not, there can still be domestic violence. All right, myth or fact, when women engage in domestic abuse, it is only for reasons of self-defense. This is also a myth. So the woman here would be the accused, the accuser here and the victim. Um, this would, this could be in a physical nature. It could also be in a social nature. She could be uh, restricting who this man speaks to, um, who they hang out with, who they communicate with. She could also be economically um, abusing a man. Um, and there are many other ways, isolating, um, things like that. Okay. So it happens with women as well. I also like to, to uh, tell a little personal story with that. Um, I have to check myself sometimes because I actually like some of those songs that are uh, woman is abused and she fights back and um, kills or maims or beats up someone. And while uh, domestic violence is very is at a much higher rate in women than men, that doesn't mean that 
we can condone the behavior. So like if I like Dixie Chicks, I'm dating myself, I know. If I like the song by Dixie Chicks, Goodbye Earl, that's about killing someone and I can't really condone that. If I also like Beyonce's song, Daddy Says Shoot, I can't technically condone that behavior. It is still violence. It is still illegal activity. So I have to check myself on that. I have to watch it when I'm around my kids. I want to make sure that I am uh, displaying a behavior that would, that I would like them to display. So myth or fact, male, oh, I just gave it away. <laughs> male on male or female or female violence is assault and battery, not domestic abuse. I think we've covered this enough. Yes, you can have domestic abuse in same sex couples. It is not only in heterosexual couples. All right, myth or fact, men who batter their partner may also abuse their child. This is a fact, okay? Um, we do see instances of child abuse in, in homes that have domestic violence prevalent. Um, the other thing that we want to bring light to is that the child abuse could also not be I hit my spouse and then I also hit my child. It could be I hit my spouse and my child is neglected. Or I abuse my spouse and my child is a witness to that abuse. So that's the other thing where law enforcement gets involved. The, the main charge might be domestic violence but I'm also going to have a CPS um, case because that child is in an unsafe household. That's something to consider too. Children who are witnesses to domestic abuse may become adult victims or abusers. Myth or fact? That is also a fact. So this is, when we're talking about causes of domestic abuse, this is one of the things that we like to put up at the top. Yes, there are instances where children were abused as a child and then later go into relationships may have no uh, no want to actually abuse but when they become under stress when they are abusing when they are um, when they are abusing alcohol and, and drugs or if they just become overwhelmed they might then become um, accused um, and be the ones that are inflicting domestic violence. All right, myth or fact, deployment is the cause for intimate violence, intimate partner violence in the military. All right, I think we've covered this one as well. That's a myth. Um, deployment is stressful. It adds additional stress. Um, it causes strains on relationships, but that is not the cause. This is not, this is something that can be affiliated with it. But there's usually a few other factors in there that will make um, domestic violence happen. All right, so next we're going to talk about the definitions. I want to make sure that we really line those out and that you know who the key resources are and what your plan of action is for when you see or suspect abuse. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye.